It's a thrill. It's a thrill for me to have you back here. Thank you. Just get up. Just get a two shot here. Get a two shot here. Look at that. Is that not the very definition of eye candy, ladies? <laughs> 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 Hi, it's great to have you back. My pleasure. Uh, my you're pleasure. back here in Europe uh, for holiday or for filming? Uh, both. I was uh, with the family in, in uh, France and Italy and Spain uh, for about three weeks. And Prague we went to. And then I went home for a week and then I came back to uh, pay for the trip. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> promote, promoting uh, Pelham 1. So you're back here for the movie now, which, yeah. uh, which we're going to get to because right. I've seen it and I loved it. Um, but uh, what do you make of uh, Europe? How do you like that as a vacation destination for you and the family? Because the kids are pretty grown up now, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're all just about out of the house. Uh, the youngest ones are on their way to college this fall. And uh, we've been going for 19, 20 years now. We take them every summer. We try to go to a city and teach them a little something. So you learn a bit about the city? You, you learn about the a city. They've been to London, they've been to Paris, they've been to Prague, Stockholm, all around. So, the kids are growing up. Are they leaving home? Are they still with you and the missus? Uh, the, the oldest boy is a professional football player, American football wow. player. Wow! Yeah. How old is yeah. he? He'll be 25 on so Tuesday. So, big guy, strapping fella? Big man, big man, yeah. Exactly. I gotta leave him alone. Yeah, but yeah. he's got to sleep sometime. Yeah. You know, so. <laughs> so you get yeah, that's yeah, it. I give him yeah. too many sleeps. But, <laughs> Bit of dad's uh, discipline. Yeah, and then his younger brother is a basketball player. In fact, they won the California State Championship. And so I'm imagining you're a pretty sporty family anyway. You must be a yeah, sporty Yeah, I, I played, I played uh, basketball and football in college. Okay, yeah. so they've got it from you. Uh, would you like to have gone professional? I'm living it through my son. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I would have loved to have gone professional. I guess I wasn't good enough, evidently. Yeah. But it worked out all right. You know. And now the daughters, you have twin twins. No, the twins are boy and oh, a girl. The twins boy and the girl. So the youngest, my youngest twin is, uh, she's the actress in the family. Wow. She's, she's starting uh, to study uh, theater in uh, university this fall. And now, presumably though, you know, pretty soon you're going to have an empty house. We, ha we will have one this fall. That, and that's, uh, I imagine, quite a hard thing to deal with, isn't it? Yeah. Well, you know what? My wife, uh, I left Wednesday night to fly. I've been to Spain. I've been to Berlin. I've been to... Uh, where am I? I'm in London. I've been to uh, Paris and then here in London the last five days. And uh, Wednesday night, my wife freaked out. She was out. She had a meeting. And she came home about 11 and nobody was home. And she went in the house and she said it was making too much noise. The house was creaking or something. Yeah, and yeah. so I get, a, I get a message the next day. I, I was calling home. I'm like, oh, as soon as I leave, my wife's hanging out all night. Yeah. <laughs> but I get a, a message the next, the next day about 1 in the morning saying that she's driving around. She said, oh, hello, I'm just driving around, you know, I'll talk to you tomorrow. I'm like, what is that about? Come to find out, she was driving around the driveway. She was so nervous, she was riding around in the driveway in front of the house. So she didn't want to stay in the house? She slept in the car. <laughs> so you're away from home, your wife has a breakdown. She has a breakdown. Oh, but man, I can she... understand that, because yeah. my kids are getting older, I'm dreading, and I know my wife is really dreading when they, when they had us. Well, they, you know, they're literally joined at the hip or at the stomach. I mean, you know, she, she, she bore them, she raised them. It's, 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 it's been her life for 25 years. Would you, uh, you know, I know it's late in life, but you can keep having babies these days until no you're about 70 or 80. Would you consider any more? Uh, that's a question for her. Okay. <laughs> you well, know. have you asked her? <laughs> Should we get on the phone now? She's probably driving around outside. <laughs> Terrified. Terrified. Should we, should we please just want to talk to? Uh, no, she said she's done. She said okay, she's yeah, done. Uh, you know, uh, because it's hard to think of going back to that stage when, when they're tiny, lovely imagine. though it is. Okay, Denzel is back in town because there's a brand new uh, big action movie coming out and it couldn't have a better cast because you've got Denzel uh, opposite the fabulous John Travolta right. in this film and it's great seeing you guys work with each other, spar off each other. Right. Um, how much uh, of an influence on you accepting the part was his involvement in the uh, project? I actually suggested him. So you were already signed on for it? I was signed on, and the first person I thought of was John. I'd never worked with John, and, and I didn't really know him well. In fact, my wife knows him better than me. And uh, Is there a story that we should, we yeah, should yeah, get right. into here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and uh, you know, really a sweet, sweet man. And, and, and uh, you know, we, we filmed this last year before this, this terrible tragedy that Awful. he had in his family. But uh, we, we just had a lot of fun, and he, he loves to sing songs. And, you know, because in, in, in the story, uh, we talk to each other over a microphone, and, and he over a walkie-talkie. So 
the first three weeks I was on camera and he was in his dressing room doing just the voice. Oh, she so did it that way. Yeah, well, let's separately. just start because people might know this is a remake of a film and it's substantially different, the right, original, right. which I think is a good thing yeah. because I love the original. And so I thought, well, is, is it right they remake it? But they've made it so different that it feels yeah, like an entirely different. different film. But the core is pretty much the same. We should uh, explain who you play in it and who John plays in it and what's going I, on. I play in a guy who's overweight. I put on 40 pounds to, to, for the film and, and uh, took it off, I think. Yeah, no, but you yeah. look great. But you look pretty good. You can carry the weight. So you yeah. kind of got away with it. It's called bigger clothes. Yeah, but how, and, and so how did that feel, carrying that extra bulk around? Uh, like an extra 40 pounds. Yeah. But getting there was such fun. Yeah, I bet. Oh, <laughs> man. Milkshakes, hamburgers, you know. Oh. Middle of the night, a little hagen dots, whole nice. pint. Oh, anything I wanted. Just eat, eat, nice. eat. And what would you wear around the house to be comfortable? Not that I'm quite that big, but I feel sweat gathers under here <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> in the folds of the back of my knees. And I, I found an all-in-one sheet with a hole cut in the top. <laughs> Is cooling. Did you go for the moo-moo? I, I should have. I should have. I should have. A poncho, perhaps. A poncho, yeah, a tent. Uh, and how did you your wife reacted to you bulking up like this. What did she say about it? Uh, she, uh, she, she was okay with it. She didn't mind cuddling. I Denzel? think every wife wants their husband to be plump and, you know, fatten them up. You know, I know that she doesn't eat. She cooks all this food for me, but she doesn't eat it. Do you think they make you fat so that you won't roam? Take you off the market. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think there's. Uh, I don't know. What do you think, gents? Is there something to that? Yeah. Yeah. Ladies. Yeah. <laughs> See? They're all blinded by us. We're too glamorous. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, but that's, that's that, you know, my wife is, she's, she's a traditional, you know, she's great wife. You know, they say behind every great man is a great woman. Well, my wife's in front of me. I'm following her. She's, she's a great cook, and, and I remember one time she wanted to hire a chef. I'm like, for who? You ain't yeah. cooking for me. Because she's a great cook, and, and you know, well, she's that's a love, me That's up. a lovely thing for her to hear, I bet. I mean, what? Loves, well, you say, no, we don't need a chef. You're the best cook. No, she's, I'm not eating anybody else's food. That's fantastic. I'm eating my wife's food. Uh, OK, now, back to taking a Pelham 1, 2, 3. Yeah, that's the, the name weight. of the film. You put on the weight for yeah. this movie, um, which, is, which shows a certain kind of diligence, and uh, a lot of people wouldn't do that, you know, and it's... Uh, uh, so Laziness, it's really. But, it's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it's interesting you did this film because it's, it's more of an all that action thriller, but you're not the action role in it. Right. He, he's an ordinary guy in an extraordinary set of circumstances. It's actually partially based on a, a real guy who, I won't give away the story, but there's this cloud over his head. He's in a bit, a bit of a pickle. And, uh, 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 and this, this opportunity, this, this call that he happens to pick up at his dispatch desk is from Ryder, who's played by John Travolta. And it's a hostage situation, and he wants a lot of money and all of this. And I get more and more involved. And because of the problem that my character has, this is an opportunity for him to redeem himself. Uh, it must be fun when you, you make a movie like that, you come into a project like that, and when you see it finish on the screen and you know it works, you know people, are, you know, it, right, it, right. It, it, it achieves what it set out to achieve. Right. Because that can't, I guess, always be the case with films, is it? No, no, it's not always the case. I mean, and even the, the scene you saw is just really the beginning of the, the screws tightening. It just mm. gets more intense and intense and... Uh, uh, John is, you know, he, 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 I think he's such a good bad guy because he's actually such a good, good person. Even when he's being that evil on screen, you kind of like him. You like him, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. I wish the second day of shooting, I'm like, I'm playing the wrong part. You're quite, I get the feeling, and I may be wrong, I get the feeling that not, not necessarily in terms of party politics or group, but you're quite a political person, quite a connected person, quite an involved person. Well, you know, I'm, I'm for trying to make things better. I mean, I, I look at it like this, you know, you, 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 I, I even say it in the, in, the, in, the, in the movie, you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. You know, you can't take it with you. Yeah. And, and be it money, talent, patience, love, whatever your gift is, you can't take it with you. So what are you going to do with it when you're here? Who have you lifted up? Who have you made better? Who have you helped out? Not, not how much do you have, but what you have. Some people have love, some have patience, some have money, some have fame. Whatever your talent is, we all have something. Help your fellow man. I mean, that's the way I look at it. At the end of the day, we're, none of us are perfect. You know, none of us are angels, but you do the best you can with what you have. So, uh, what a marvelous sentiment. It's very rare. <laughs> okay, it's a lovely thing. I've heard this rumor, and, it, uh, and it's, uh, I can see why this rumor would circulate. There's uh, talk that maybe they will be making a film uh, on the life of uh, the new. President of the United States, Barack Obama, and that your name has been thrown in the ring as the uh, as the lead candidate to play him. And indeed, he said that he would like yeah, you to play. Yeah, what happened was, from what I gathered, that they interviewed him. Well, there's a photograph there where you. Well, I'll be honest with you, and I don't mean to disrespect the president, but you're. Ba now, what are you doing there, Denzel? <laughs> you know, you've got bigger ears than me. 
<laughs> no, he, he actually said that, actually. I'm, I'm just saying got, just <laughs> saying what the president said. Well, he's got... He's, he's given an impression that what you might look like with the, the president's ears. <laughs> you see? He does not well. You look like no, someone out of Star Trek, man, with those ears. <laughs> But, uh, I think the man who's got the ears, of course, will be this actor right here. This is the Will guy. Smith? Yeah, yeah. Look at those lugs. Yeah, there you go. They're even big. Yeah, well, they're very yeah, similar. They kind of match, don't okay. they? Um, no, they, he, he actually mentioned m myself and Will, and he, and he actually jokingly said Will because their ears were similar. But would you do it if the part came out? I mean, I guess it's early in his presidency for you. The story's commit. not told yet. Yeah. You know, he got to have a story to tell. I mean, he's got enough on his plate than to, to you know be worrying about. To worry about yeah. But yeah. It, it seems like that story is certainly going to be worth telling, doesn't it, at the moment? One day. One day. You know, I played some real characters before, real people before, but it was 25 years after. A the, long time after they yeah, stopped being you, that you, you, person. You need, yeah. I think you need some time. Yeah, yeah. It's an exciting time, that, to be in America, though, isn't it? It's a, it's a, every day is an exciting time to me. To be on this side of the grass is exciting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to be on this side yeah, of the grass yeah. is good. I mean, th there's, there's a hopefulness. Yeah. You know, he's pushing the agenda. He's shaking up the, the cabinet and the, and, the, and the House of Representatives. Yeah. and the, he's, he's shaking things up. He's actually said to the rest of the world, hey, we like to talk. Imagine yeah, that. There's yeah. a novel idea. And, and he's also saying we're not perfect now and we weren't perfect right. and we've made mistakes, which people didn't acknowledge before, did yeah, they? Yeah, so you know, I mean, uh, we had a rough eight years before him. Yeah. I mean, I give uh, President Bush credit for, for keeping, or President Cheney, whichever one it was, <laughs> yeah. credit for keeping the country safe. But uh, he, he kind of isolated us from the rest of the world. I mean, I, I travel a lot and, and it was... It was embarrassing. Uh, have you been to the Oval Office? Have you visited since uh, Barack Obama has you know, become president? I've been invited, but I haven't gone yet because everybody's been bum rushing the place. You know, mm -hmm. everybody wants to be there. Oh, we take a picture. I see every other every other day somebody else is there. Yeah. He's got enough on his plate. He invited me. I, I was so honored. He he, he asked me to, to do two things. They had a big uh, concert at the Lincoln Memorial, yeah. and, they, and they asked me to open the show, which was like two million people or whatever. Yeah. And then at his first uh, inaugural ball, uh, he asked me to introduce he and the, the, the first lady as the, as the, for the first time and to in introduce their first dance. That's exciting. And I was like, that's a long way for a kid from, you know, from, the, from Mount Vernon, New York, and I'm like the president of the United States. That's not too bad. But he'll get bored of you soon. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I think it's starting to happen already. Yeah, he, and, and he invited me to come play basketball with him. What? No. No, yeah. He's, he's, you know, no, but what's he, the protocol he, there? Because you can't beat him. I'll You're not allowed beat to beat the, the hell out of him. You can't beat him. Boom! Take that. Take that. I'll crush him like a grape. Can I ask you, please? <laughs> Uh, you, you've never worked with uh, Quentin, have you? No, he's never, never, never hired me. Quentin, he's hey, never hired me. Quentin, what's the what's the problem with you? What's wrong with you? Why have you not ever written a film for Denzel? What's I, wrong I, with you? I haven't been that lucky. Okay, okay. Well, are you going to do one now? <laughs> <laughs> it would be my honor. I'm really not just saying that. I think he is one of the best actors in the world. I don't think, although I don't think uh, the the Barack Obama story would be safe in your hands. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's the one I you want to bring you guys together on that. <laughs> that's asking for trouble. Oh, man. Uh, it's uh, so nice to have you back. Thank you so much My for coming pleasure. on the show. Uh, you must come back on if you're in town again. I'd love to have you here again, love if you wouldn't mind. Here. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a great movie. Go see The Taking of Pella 123. It's our next Friday if you get the chance. Mr. Denzel Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Terrific time. Thank you. Thank you.